Good afternoon, Australia. It's the 7th of May, 2017. My name is Franco, and joining me is Dean in the progressive bubble, uh, Sans Jason. It seems like we can't get a full show these weeks, you know? No, there is no I'm longer... one week, Jason's the next. A full complement of the BAP is seemingly becoming more and more difficult. I assure you I am not the Tyler Durden to his <laughs> uh, Edward Norton character in Fight Club, whose name I can't remember. Uh, well, he's currently uh, travelling around lower Western Australia. Are we lower because it's worse, or, or is it just you put a lot of emphasis there on lower? Um, no, the lesser parts of Western no, Australia. No, no, well, the backwaters. Perhaps <laughs> from dive bar to dive bar. <laughs> um, he, I think he's on the search for true Australian values. All oh, right, apparently, it's getting out there. That's something uh, politicians could get behind. Apparently, there's a war on Australian values, and Jason's out there to provide the the rear guard defence of he, Australian is values. Is he going to record any uh, interviews with real Australians? I, for I'd us like to think out there? so. I'd like to think well, so. We'll put that expectation on him. I, Quiz I would, him next week. I'd like to actually see him conduct the Australian Values Test as soon to be prescribed by the Malcolm Turnbull Coalition Government. Have we got an advanced view of this test, though? No, I don't believe so. Wow, oh, that's a shame. Um, douchebaggery, filterage. Um, I went through with my promise to watch an episode. Well, it wasn't an episode in the end, but um, my mother recommended the show to me, so I thought I will try an episode of it, which turned out to be five episodes. It's so it was a, good. Yes. Or you rage watched. No, no, no. I enjoyed watched. Uh, it's a show called The Young Pope. The Young Pope. Yes, it's a HBO show. Well, it's actually a partnership between HBO and Sky Canal and somebody else. So it's a European production. Right. So I think HBO's in on it. Uh, it's got um, some well-known American actors in it. So um, Diane Keaton, Jude Law, and some other people I can't remember. How long has this been going on for? It was actually filmed in 2016, or at least in 2016. So currently, there's only one season. And for people who are familiar with the series, it's unlikely that the second series will be coming out soon. Um, I quickly did some Googling, and apparently the the director has written a second series, um, but nothing's been signed yet to go forward with it. And even if something does get signed, shooting probably won't begin till summer 2018. Oh, wow. Yeah. Apparently, um, well, one of the, the great aspects of the show is just the filmography. They, there's a lot of loving detail put into the scenes and so forth, so that takes quite a bit of time. Um, and aside for that, it's actually a really great show. Um, obviously, those who've had experience with the Catholic Church in some way, shape or form have a, have a bit more investment in the show because obviously you've got a lot more references to draw upon. But aside from that, it's a really good show. Is it pro-Catholic Church or is it mocking them or what's going on? Well, more focus is on the internal politics of the Catholic Church. So okay. you don't have to come into this show. It's like the, the West position. Wing for Catholics. Yes. Um, but the, the character that Jude Law plays is quite quixotic. I hope I'm using that word right. Is he the, the titular young pope? No, he's, a, he's a quite odd. And there's a sort of air of mystery about him. You can't quite figure out what his deal is. They sort of, they play on different angles of him. Is he sort of uh, mysteriously feeling the hand of God working for him? Is he just an oddball? Is he... But, I mean, there's a lot of American aspects of him, but he's very um, archaic in his views of the world. So it's this really interesting mix to see how it unfolds. They don't, they're not really spelling a lot of it. He's sort of ruffling the feathers of the um, establishment politics within the Vatican. And how many episodes total are there? Ten. So you're halfway? Yes. You gotta slow down. More will not be out for a while. <laughs> this is true, but there's other full wonderful shows I can be watching. So um, I do recommend this show. There's not a lot of fighting that. in it, unfortunately. There's no Game of Thrones That's slaughter not a bad thing. and so forth. It's not a bad thing. And Jude Law does a wonderful job. Yeah, very cool. Although the episodes are quite long, they're not pretty much a full hour. That's not the end of the world. I quite like the way HBO does their sort of ten hours of tight programming every season. Not so good if you want to binge watch, though. <laughs> right, yep, no, okay, that's a that's an issue. So I've only been able to sort of manage an episode. Here and there. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's kind of cool. But, yeah. So my uh, my viewing, pretty much new viewing, consisted uh, primarily of um, Neil Gaiman's American Gods. Oh, just you been made. did mention that last um, night. I think it's made by 
Showtime or FX or Stars or something like one of the channels you wouldn't really expect, but it's quite a reasonable budget. It's a um, it's a TV show that examines what happens to uh, idols that were formerly worshipped. So it's like these embodiments of of like Norse mythology and, and, and Greek mythology, and that they're all walking the earth still. Um, and it's it's a little bit strange and bizarre. And they're also competing with the new gods of the internet and and, and money and stuff. Uh, it's 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 worth watching. Uh, it will probably confuse people. The book is a little confusing. They they adapted a lot of the scenes pretty good, I thought, and some of the casting was is amazing. So um, and it's got Ian McShane in there as well. So and he or she is from I don't want to say Deadwood. Oh, okay. And other things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, well worth a watch. So the premise is that the gods do exist, but they're going they're falling into non-existence because people don't believe them in them. Exactly, they're not the getting worshipped. Right, and they don't like that. Um, they're they, vain they, gods. They're very vain, and they don't like the new gods. Of uh, there's a lot of disagreement, and uh, something is afoot. Some of the old gods are making moves, and people don't know what's going on. So, in this show, is a god an extraterrestrial being? Uh, they don't really delve into that. They're just gods, and you have to accept that. Exactly. Right. They're just embodiments of. I think it's more the power of belief creates the manifestation thereof. Yeah. They're not so much alien as they are just belief personified. So if people stop believing them altogether, according to the law of this show, do they cease to exist? They certainly feel their powers wane. Right, okay. Um, I guess no one's really been completely given up on just yet. Uh, but it's, it's, worth, it's worth checking out. It's, worth, it's very, very, it's probably the opposite of the, new, of the young Pope. It's very violent. Uh, <laughs> excessively. Like, it, it's, it's hyper-violent. So does the, the bloodlust um, extend from dispatching of gods or dispatching of people? Uh, just all of the above. No, like okay. Some of them are engaging in, in, in malaise and scuffling with each other. And, and sometimes it's people who are uh, believers of the gods that are getting uh, brutalized. There's a lot of uh, violence going on, which I think has been intentional. They're trying to sort of pitch it to that, you know, the, the current hip Walking Dead crowd, Game of Thrones crowd. They want the violence. It's a bit more in your face than it is in the books. An underserved community of the viewing public who exactly, don't get enough yeah. bloodlust. They don't get enough bloodlust. Here's some more. <laughs> to appease you but it should also be a mini series it'll be done in 10, 10 episodes and that'll be it oh, okay so it's one season yes oh that's good um, i do like that so i'm hoping they stick to that because there's no more book after that so uh, can you see that in the story arc that it is going to come to a conclusion i oh, suppose you've read the book i've already so seen you know. i've read the book and i've seen one episode and i feel like they covered a, a good bit of ground in that first episode so i think they can definitely make it happen in just one season i very much hope they do the book is has some strange pacing in places. Like it, it's it ponders a little bit around things, and the main character takes a break and lives by a lake for a little while, and like time passes before he goes back and gets involved in all this stuff. And I, I can't imagine them doing that. And if they do do it, well, ugh, it's gonna be a lot of boring. <laughs> Doesn't make for good viewing, does it? No. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But um, so that, I, I would recommend that as well. Okay. Now, as um, the BAPS senior Game of Thrones correspondent with Game of Thrones coming back onto our screens in June, I believe, or yeah. July. June? July. July. Is there any gossip? Uh, I think there's always gossip. Um, What's Tingle Jury is? Now that I've put you on the spot. I'm you prepared. put me a little bit on the spot. Um, look, the, the, the most sort of tingling of ears for me was, was seeing Gendry was back. I think I've talked about that before. He's mm -hmm. been photographed on set, so he was... Mm -hmm. Last seen rowing away from Dragonstone, end of season three maybe. So it took him a while to uh, to get somewhere, but it looks like he's back, which is is kind of good. And beyond that, I haven't seen too much in the way of God. I've, I've seen other bits and pieces like Euron ends up marrying Cersei, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen any major spoilers as to where they're going with you know Daenerys and her dragons yet. No, or I the did Army see a dead. trailer where they were just focusing on Jon Snow, Cersei, Daenerys, Daenerys, and Cersei. Yeah. And suggesting that that is where the power play lies. Yeah, which will be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see what's going on. What happened to the bastard? That's Gendry. Ah. So he's back. He is back. So they, they left that little thread for a while. I was wondering if it was relevant or not. Because they went to all that effort for a couple of seasons to keep him around. To say he exists. Yeah. He was going to be dispatched by the Red Witch. Yeah. Which didn't happen. He got, didn't happen. He got away. And no more was said about him. Yeah, exactly, which is which, which I thought was very odd. Um, so it looks like they're going to pick up on that. Um, but other than, other than that, I'm sort of just waiting with bated breath, trying to, you know, trying not to spoil it too much for myself. 
And there's no books left for me to know what's coming up now. So, so have they gone beyond the books at this point? Yeah. yeah. Under the guidance of um, Jim Munn, is that his name? George. George Munn. Yes. Um, yeah, I would have, uh, allegedly... He's a consultant on this. He's a consultant, but they, they've, they've changed significantly. So yeah. it's hard to say, you know. And, and it, a lot of it would be tough for television as well, in that, that 10 episode, one hour, an episode format. So we will see. And I guess they're, they're winding things up now. They've got one season left, split over two years. But There are rumours of spin-offs. Yeah, four apparently. Yes. That's a bit odd. Did you see what they would be about? Absolutely no detail has oh, been okay. given on those yet. I would imagine one of them would probably be Robert's Rebellion. That seems like a likely oh, yes. story, how Robert came to power. And I would imagine maybe another one. There's another series of short stories called... Um, about Duncan the Tall and Aegon Targaryen, which I imagine they might have tapped. The Mad King. Uh, um, his adventure. Uh, prior to him. Yep. Um, but not by much. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think it's about 200 years before it. Yeah. Um, so they might adapt that too. But the other two, I've got no idea. I saw a, a number of good puns on Reddit about this. <laughs> Imp My Ride was one they suggested. You know, Tyrion doing up carts for people. <laughs> I think that'd be all right. <laughs> Um, oh, I forget, what, what's his name, the the master spy? Littlefinger. No, yeah. Varys. Varys. That'd be interesting if they had a sort of exploration of his past. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they... I don't, I don't, know, I don't know the direction they're going to go. Maybe, I mean, they could, be doing, they could be talking miniseries. They can't do four series, like whole series. That seems too much. No, it seemed like there would be just HBO style, one would yeah. imagine. Like. And so, there's a lot of room for them to explore. It's a big universe. It is, it is a fairly big, well-established universe. I don't know if you'd want them going too much forward into the future because that would then fence George off from writing new books. Mm. I mean, how many more books can he actually write, though? He's getting on. Mm. So probably not too many. He may not even finish the series as it goes. He's got two to go. Is no he writing a book publishing. at the yeah, moment? Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> I don't know how quick he's going. It's been <laughs> not very five quick. or six years now. So, And they're pretty meaty tomes, aren't they? They are. They're about 1,000 pages. Wow. Um, and he's been spending time, obviously, working on Game of Thrones and, and other projects. So not a lot seems to have happened. But I cross my fingers and hope. You played a new game. I I did. I, I um, It's a Bethesda Softworks published game uh, made by Arcane Studios. And it is called Prey, as in Hunter and Prey. Mm-hmm. And it is uh, a sort of a survival horror in space thing so it's set on a space station earth's first space station in orbit of the moon called talos one where they do a bunch of r&d work and part of that r&d work is um splicing alien dna into humans Mm -hmm. and they're experimenting on these aliens and some people and the aliens decide they don't want to be the subject of experiments anymore they breach breach containment get out you're in the middle of a simulation it goes horribly wrong and then you realize you've been on doing that simulation on repeat for three years. Oh wow! Um, as they've been resetting your mind. So when they put these, when they put uh, the genetics in or out, it'll also wipe your mind. And then as things unravel, it you know it develops from there. It turns out you were not you're a little more than a volunteer. Oh. So you had quite a heavy involvement, and um, they it's this they do a bunch of interesting mechanics where um, so these alien things sort of exist partly in this world, partly somewhere else. So they they can some of them can sort of change shape and look like something. So you walk into a room and if you see like two coffee mugs next to each other where someone would be sitting, one of those coffee mugs isn't a coffee mug, it's probably about to attack you. Or you might see like two fl- two chairs at a desk and you'd be like, well, that's not right. Um, and then other ones have different powers. And as you acquire powers, some of your memories come back and it does these jarring things where you can see you know you're resisting and you're not, you're not entirely down with it and people are forcing things and all of that's really cool and the other thing i really like about it is they give you a bunch of tools to sort of uh and, and then a problem so you might have to get into this security office and you can um if you don't, if you don't want to embrace the alien dna you can sort of try and climb on top of the office and break in through the roof or you can try and hack the little keypads you can get like these you have like a nerf gun with um capacitive touch bullets so you can try and shoot switches and stuff with that and if you embrace the alien side you get the ability to change into like a coffee cup and try and roll through the <laughs> under, under the little grates or you get like um, telekinesis you can activate things 
But there are consequences of it, um, accepting the alien yes. DNA. Yes. Ah. So the, all the security systems in the station are rigged to shoot aliens at the moment because they've broken out. And the more alien DNA you take on, the more they start to get confused. So the, f- the first time I took one on, the turrets, when you walk into a corridor, will lock on you. And then they go, oh, it's, you know, scanning. Oh, no, that's not an alien. It's fine. And keep moving on. And then the more you take, they will eventually just start firing at you. <laughs> And then also the aliens start hunting you down because you're the uh, beneficiary of some of their genetic material. So they actually start actively, when they, they are trying to get you to start with, but they start sending bigger things to try and get you because <laughs> you become more of a problem. So it's, it's very, very well put together. Good cut scenes? Uh, it's all pretty much in, in game, in engine. The One of the things I really like about it, they have these things called looking glasses. It's set in 2032, so it's 15 years from now. There's this thing called a looking glass, which is like a computer monitor, but it's 3D space behind it. So they have these sections where you're looking out a window and you're not sure if it's really a window or if it's one of these looking glass things. And you can smash screens and stuff as well with if they're not behind you know, the stuff that seals you from the atmosphere, um, or the lack of atmosphere, rather. So there's all these kind of really cool parts where sometimes you'll see something on a screen... And there's a lot of jump scares and stuff and things will burst through the screens at you and everything smashes and it's it's really quite cool. Uh, all of that's done really well. So they've, they've they've pulled together a bunch of uh, pretty good ideas from around the place. I don't think anything's that unique about it, mm. but it's very John Carpenter's The Thing at times. Oh, yeah. It's very sort of aliens at times, um, but it works really well. And there's sections where you have to go outside and you've got little spacesuits on. And it's it's kind of it's really well done. It's really, I would strongly recommend it to anyone that enjoys. I actually prefer it to Fallout, which I I'm a diehard Fallout fan. So yeah, even this better me, than Fallout. This for me was was better than this year's Fallout. So. In ter- the thematic aspects of it, the th- thematic aspects and the uh, even though there is a sort of a set of beats you have to follow for the story, just the way you can go about it, however you want, it's really really impressive. It's it's a lot of fun, and almost anything you can think of trying you. You can do it, and it it usually gets a result. It may not be the right result, <laughs> um, and and there's this they do, because it's a survival horror. You're always scrounging for materials. You're low on supplies. You don't have guns, so you have to sort of think creatively and, okay. and work around problems a lot. I mean, you, you were saying that you can try lots of things, but is it still a linear story, more or less? Um, there is. It's it's sort of the same as um, something like uh, one of your Skyrims would be. There is an, there is an overall main story arc. And then in between that, there's all these little sub-quests you can go and do. So you don't have to follow it in any particular order. And you can pretty much go anywhere you want on the station from the get-go. You can break into anywhere and you may or may not like what you find there because sometimes you'll find really big, tough aliens you're not ready to face yet. Um, but it, it's quite good in that way. You can just explore and have fun at your own pace. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. And there's all these 3D printing things as well, so you can like print stuff. In game, if you need more bullets, or you need a new gun, or you need this, or you need that, you can get the specs, and then you can, you can, you know, so you can spec as a scientist or an engineer or a security officer, and it's it's really interesting the way it's done. Mm-hmm. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, on YouTube, as I don't have a console. Yeah, no, it's worth it's worth just watching a let's play. There's a there's a couple of sort of even like ten minute videos that just show you like the basics of the powers, and they're all pretty impressive. Excellent. Um, well, I believe that's a wrap on douchebaggery. That seems like enough to me. It's yes. 18 minutes off. <laughs> well, I mean, you got pretty serious on that game, so I didn't really want to <laughs> stop your run there. Um, this week, um, sad Corey. He's a sad bit Corey? Sad. Yes. Is it because he's being ignored by the media? Yes. <laughs> Apparently, um, he didn't realize that once you're not the shitster within the coalition, that the media don't really care about you anymore, particularly when you're going down a crazy Christian path of conservatism. Yeah, I mean, they. I did. I did saw this story where he was complaining that you used to come talk to me. Yeah, it's like well, not so much. I don't, Corey. We didn't come to talk to you. We came to talk to your shit stirring within the party. <laughs> You're no longer that person anymore. Therefore, we were never interested in you per se. Yeah, I think. I mean, and also because now he's a much smaller piece, so his chance to influence policy is is probably a little reduced. Mm. But I still think he's an interesting fellow. Um, much the same way I find Jackie Lambie to be interesting, you know, and any of these independent senators, they're always a little... David Lanhelm also interests me. I don't find Corey interesting. I, I, I agree with you to some extent. What I like about Jackie Lambie is there's a touch a touch of reality in Jackie Lambie in the things that she's been directly touched yeah, by. if she's personal experience, she's she can speaks, empathize. 
she can empathize and yeah could, speaks quite pragmatically anything else and it's just crazy town whereas there just there seems to be no reality with Corey. maybe i don't, i look I, i'm interested to see where it goes mm. i think that it's not the worst thing if if the um brats within the liberal party sort of leave and go form their own little conservative thing that's not a bad thing for the liberals they're probably going to throw their votes in with them anyway and you get them out of the party room and there's a bit more cohesion mm. so yeah it would be interesting I, and i think over time Corey will adapt to not having as much i mean pauline hansen gets an awful lot of press though yeah so it's entirely possible to be a single senator that that you know gets gets press Corey just maybe hasn't said anything overly dramatic in a while yeah, and obviously he'll have to learn about what his new identity needs to be to get that attention. So, I mean, he's a bit foolish by saying they're ignoring him because they're not. That's well, not the way the media works. I mean, the ABC, when they did their series on keeping the faith, they went and talked to Andrew Hastie as the resident liberal conservative Christian. So maybe, I'm, gl- I'm maybe glad Corey you brought, has been replaced. I'm glad you brought that up because I wasn't planning on talking that. I don't know if you brought it up, but we were swapping a few emails around about some puff pieces we saw in the ABC, and then it became apparent that they were actually running a whole series of um, religion and politics. And yeah. How, f- um, how form uh, provides a. They're all puff pieces, though. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> I read all of them, and they're all just <laughs> puff pieces about senators. Um, sorry, MPs. It's, it's odd. It's interesting. Um, Interesting. Not the the articles were interesting, but it was an interesting series that the ABC decided to run. Yeah, I thought that was like it was very. Uh, it I had to look back, and the actual first one was about an atheist. The second one was about a Muslim Labour guy, and then it was the two conservative Christian um, liberal MPs. And I didn't come across it until it was about Hasty. Mm. Um, so originally, I thought they were just running soft puff pieces on Hasty, which I thought was ludicrous. Um, but turns out they'd been running. It's a, see, see, part of me actually likes the idea to just change tax. Part of me likes the idea of, of a major news publication service putting it out there so people can get to know a bit more about their candidate. I think that's it's interesting. I don't know if it's the ABC's job to be writing these little puff pieces, but no, it is interesting. Um, it's an interesting idea. It was, I, don't like, I didn't like the execution. No. It was very puffy. There was just nothing. There was nothing of substance in there. No, and Hasty needed that after his uh, god awful uh, marriage equality debate that Cooper's <laughs> yeah. Brewery sponsored, and then dropped and ran away from as fast as they could. <laughs> He's still a bit sore about that. Yeah, why well, would be too? I don't know. It probably wasn't his idea to start with. No, probably not. Um, and he's just said yes, and then they dropped and ran as quick as they could. I don't know. Didn't they? Don't seem to have the courage of their convictions. Um, Mind you, they're a beer company, so they probably shouldn't. I think, from from a journalistic point of view, what would have been more interesting is they explored a bit further uh, about, you know, decisions that may have been affected by politicians' um, religious ideology. Yep. Which all all these articles were were that basically they let the the MP say what their views are about their religion, and which is well, don't really care. Uh, but I want to see how that ties thought, in more to policy. I thought Hastie's was interesting when he talked about uh, religious or not mixing religion or state sorry just separation of church and state yes he was saying it was important so that the state didn't mess with the church's affairs yes which is entirely the opposite for why that happened in the first place mm. well i did look that up it's not it's, it was a bit blurred in the meanings so i i immediately assume when he quoted separation of church and state was that it was always um that stemmed from keeping religion out of politics mm. and when i it's actually the other way around from but it's been sort of co-opted to mean in general from both ways, keep them separate. Mm, okay. So basically, it was made sure that the American, um, the Republic. Sorry, I've just had a mental blank. So you got the Constitution, which is the, it's not the Republic of America, is it? The United States of America. Sorry, the Constitution of the United States of America make sure they can't um, determine what the state religion is. Hmm. Okay. And no, and and they they can't mandate what what religions do and so forth. Uh, maybe I need to look a bit more about that. That's when I quickly looked it up because when I saw those comments, I thought, hold on, he's very much worried about the ch- with the state messing, messing with, with the religion church and not as the opposed church to the other way him. around. Which he seems to be perfectly fine on being guarded by his religious principles oh, when making policy decisions. Indeed. Rather than representing his constituents. Yes. Um, and, I mean, aside from that, though, the, the, they were quite boring and I, I think. If, for me, it would have been more interesting, as I said before, if the, the 
if they were challenged about more how they decide on certain policies and how their religious guided them on that, mm. which they don't really do, don't really care about how happy they are with their religion. No, well, I'm. I mean, you'd want to be happy with your religion, wouldn't you? If you're mm. if you're going through all the motions of uh, the ceremony every weekend and you <laughs> hated it, then you probably maybe should make a change. But uh, you know, good good for Hasty, I guess. Look, as like I said, I think more for him, he needed the good press. So I think that was interesting to see. And I think was he, it good press? Better than the last press he's getting. <laughs> yes, true. Uh, and I think he's he's sort of taking on the mantle that uh, Corey's left behind, of being the the. the Christian conservative within the Liberal Party, the figurehead. Now, he's the um, MP for Canning, I he believe. Is. Not known as an overly religious um, constituency of Western Australia, he necessarily. Didn't, yeah, he didn't campaign on religion. I mean, no, he's very working his class. His father's a minister, so he was, uh, when he started campaigning, people asked him the question of, hey, will religion have an effect on your campaign? He's like, I don't even want to talk about religion. It's got nothing to do with my yes. campaign and will have nothing to do with how I conduct myself. Turns out, well, that's not entirely true, mm-hmm. um, but it, he, I think, well, I guess we'll see what happens with his future selection. He's, he'll be around for a while. True. And he, he seems to be reasonably, well, he's getting he's getting access to the press, whereas other sort of junior MPs aren't. Yes, yeah, so I think he has grand visions of where he'll end up within mm. the, the Liberal Party. I think the Liberal Party probably have grand visions of where he's going to end up as well. If they could, If they can get it right, he could be that, you know, uh, firebrand for the conservatives to rally behind. Mm, man, he definitely wants to be a firebrand by, yeah, by all accounts. Um, the other thing I had was um, Peter Dutton. Last week, I had a wish that the story about Peter Dutton manufacturing the version of events that led to the Good Friday shooting on Manus Island yeah, he's just... would continue in the press, and not they haven't really. But um, fortunately, it's still in the press because um, Green Senator. Nick McKim um, went to Manus Island uh, this week to visit the conditions that the um, asylum seekers and refuge uh, see the conditions that they're in that the Australia puts them in. Hmm. Geez, I bodged that sentence a little bit. Yeah, like we bodged our treatment of refugees, no doubt. Yes, so it's good to see an actual senator actually goes to see firsthand the conditions that we put asylum seekers and refugees in. Others have, tri- others have tried, uh, and there was a there was a travel bans on a lot of people going. Well, th- I should mention that he didn't actually get to go inside the detention center. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, because so, they, they're usually pretty strict about what you can yeah. do. So, um, and but he did have some comments about um, Potato Dutton, in as much as um, he's obviously spoken with the local MP there. I think his name was Ryan Knight. Um, Ronnie Knight, he spoke with the PNG police and he spoke with the detainees and he stated that the versions of events are all consistent that the um, young boy who was seen, according to Peter Dunn, led away by asylum mm. seekers, um, was not. Was not. He, the, the young boy was asking for food and um, some detainees and security guards gave the boy food and he went on his way. Nobody's r- raised, uh, lodged a report with the police about any ill treatment or so forth. Mm. Um, but Potato Dutton's still doubling down on that. I wonder if he's been gagged by the PM and told not to talk about it because I haven't seen much come up around it. I mean, the press haven't even had much to move on to. Well, Peter refuses to release the CCTV footage. Well, no doubt, because it would not look good for him. But he did show Andrew Bolt. Oh, well, there you go. You know, a, a famous neutral, neutral very, arbiter very, of Australian he's politics. He's a very neutral party. Um, who, and Andrew Bolt um, said upon viewing the footage um, that uh, more or less corroborated the stories but still looked suspicious. So, sorry, corroborated the story of the uh, PNG police and the detainees. However, it still looks suspicious. Right. So that's one way of saying uh, his friend Pete's wrong. No, I, I, it more st- still trying to support his friend Pete as best he could. Well, it's interesting that he can release CCTV footage just to one member of the press. Yes, that's unusual. I don't like Pete. No, I don't like him. I don't think a lot of people like Pete. Mm. I'd really like to. We had a um, there was a New South Wales Legal Institute attached to one of the universities there. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, put forward a paper that's spe- it, sorry, it's a legal research centre into refugee you know, international uh, refugee law, put forward a paper suggesting that our actions are unlawful. Now, obviously, no one's going to hold us 
responsible for that. We don't hold ourselves to account for that either. <laughs> yes, no, but it's, 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 it's interesting to see that the pressure continues to mount. Mm. Uh, whether anything will come of it, I don't know. But, um, you know, Pete's a bit of a shit. Yeah. Continues to be. So um, it's the French elections at the moment. Oh, yes. Right now. Yes, I've been sort of following it. Polls close about 4 a.m. our time, which I think is, is going to be interesting. So we could wake up in the morning facing a Frexit and Marine Le Pen, <laughs> which would just make my Monday in... in I think I'd probably just go back to bed. Um, or, or we could be, uh, you know, waking up to hopefully a bit more of a, a unified Europe under Emmanuel Macron. It's a little interesting to, to watch. With all the uh, sort of catastrophic elections around the world lately, I'm not willing to sort of say Le Pen won't win this. No, it's still, well, you've got to be in to win it. And she's one of two. She's one of two, yeah. Did you see the news item that um, uh, they got, uh, sorry, in Mark got hacked? No. So a lot of the files for um, um, Macron and so forth. Uh, I haven't actually seen what's been released, but WikiLeaks has been assisting in the release of these documents. Fortunately, they for, seem to assist right-wing parties. Oddly, yeah, strangely. Um, fortunately for um, I keep forgetting Macron, um, it's come just at the time where there's a blackout, so you can't really report on the, the election. The election. So, it doesn't mean it won't still be released on the internet. It, no, it definitely will, but you know that won't affect him as much as some of the Hillary releases. No, or the FBI yeah. they announcing they were reopening. Yeah. I saw um, an interview uh, with what's his face from the FBI, who Comey. Yeah, that's the one. Talking about you know he feels a little sick in his stomach sometimes when he thinks about the impact he may have had on the election. Uh, no shit, Matt, buddy. You know he's. Um, he talked about how, you know, regrettably he couldn't talk about the investigation into Trump's connections to Russia because that was still classified at the time as an ongoing investigation. But with Hillary's investigation being reopened, he had to tell Congress because he'd been telling him for a long time that she was clear and now she wasn't. It's and yet we've heard nothing of that reopening of the case, have we? No. Nothing's really come of it. No, no. Well, she was cleared again. Yeah. So. Thanks, Comey. Don't know if it's entirely his fault, but it's interesting. And then I saw Hillary being interviewed and she was saying that obviously she takes full responsibility for the loss but the FBI and uh, the other leaks didn't help <laughs> I always like when someone takes full responsibility but, but. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's not responsibility then you're just giving some excuses on top of that you want to list a whole lot of people that aren't responsible for yeah, yeah. something you've just taken full responsibility for I take full responsibility but the following people also <laughs> you know I'm letting them off <laughs> but I want you guys to know that they're a little bit to blame but I'm fully responsible but they're a little bit you know, if I wasn't taking it, they'd be in. Uh, so the other thing that's coming up this week, uh, it's a budget. It's a, sorry, federal budget for Australia on Tuesday. Scott Morrison's going to be delivering the goods, apparently. <laughs> we shall see. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. I don't know why. I don't know many people who'd be looking forward to a Scott Morrison budget. But he has come out in the media and he said that he will be tackling the issues of having affordability head on. But <laughs> he will not be engaging in any changes to negative gearing or the capital gains discount. But he guarantees that, every, all Australia, that Australians won't be disappointed with the changes he's putting forwards. I don't see how those two things can be achieved together. No, I mean, you, in the one sentence you're saying, you're going to tackle them head on and in the same sentence, not actually address some of the core components. Yes, I acknowledge that capital gains tax and um, negative gearing aren't the sole contributors, but they're the massive elephants in the room. Yeah, it's interesting to see. Um, I'm wondering, I, I just, I feel like sooner or later, people are going to get tired of Scott. But I mean people in the Liberal Party. He can't really get budgets through. And even when they do put forward these budget positions, none of their policies get over the line. The tax cuts go through. But none of the other, nothing else goes through. They, they seem to be a bit, a little bit neutered at the moment. Did you see that? Um, apparently, Scott's going to remove the two percent um, debt um, budget uh, health levy. No, oh, I did from not. people who own over one hundred ninety thousand. I mean, they're doing it pretty tough. Yeah, I know, I know. they've been, you know, the, some of the most hard, li hard hardest dealt Australians that are out there. It's not Australian values to be um, punishing the rich. No, I for, mean, they don't want to pay their fair For big share. government's inability to control spending. No. Well, you know, you put it down that way. I mean, really, it's Scott's fault. 
So maybe we should tax Scott 100% of his wages. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should do like a special BAP celebration, maybe next week, because we're going to have the French elections today and the budget on Tuesday. So next week's going to be a big show. What I did see this week, international news, which I thought was pretty good, rather than talking about things that are going to happen, is uh, Donald Trump telling Turnbull that uh, we have a better healthcare system here in Australia than they have in America, yeah. which I thought was, was quite the compliment to pay. Interestingly enough, the White House immediately went into full-on scramble mode after that and insisted that Trump was just paying a compliment to an ally and he didn't mean that they actually had a better system. Even though we pay less and get more, that's not better. It's different. It may, maybe it's more efficient. Maybe it delivers better outcomes for patients, but it's not better. I'm, Ameri- I'm, I'm really confused on that. So the, were that, was the State Department saying that Trump was lying to a friend about... Apparently, well, not lying so much, just trying to build his confidence up. It's all right, Malcolm. <laughs> it's not your fault. People will one day appreciate the, you for the great man you were. I mean, look at your health system. It's great. Best in the world. Yeah, no, quite funny, I thought. Quite funny. Has Trump stepped away from his comments? No. He never steps away he from He doesn't really step away from comments. No. He just moves on to a different comment. <laughs> you just say something else outrageous and people move on. They forget. Mm. It's Peter Dutton's strategy of politics. He does that in a much more clumsy way, though. Does he? I mean, Trump's not exactly the most nuanced man. He's not, but there's a certain bluster about him that... He does. ...is, he, a certain, is a stylistic. He does. He has that aura of, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, which I think is actually probably not even... It's just accurate. Like, I just genuinely think... There's an aspect of his aura which permeates, I do not reflect on anything I say. Yeah. I, well, I do not know or care about what I'm saying. Yeah. Anything that I've said... Past this point, being the immediate present, yeah. is something I never reflect on. Yeah, it's I assume that whatever I said before was correct and factual, no matter what you prove against it. Well, and moving forwards, I'm always going to be correct and factual. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I did don't, you I celebrate don't know. his 100 days in office? Yes, I did. What did I celebrate? Uh, does anyone celebrate that? I mean, <laughs> the people who voted for him didn't really get any of his promises, maybe no. one in 10 of the promises he made achieved uh it, trump obviously says it was the best hundred days in office of any president to date <laughs> i don't think that's the case but who am i to uh call trump a liar uh, well, just one of many people calling him a liar probably did you hear i think i think it was this week or last week his lament about the civil war war what is it good for mm-hmm. couldn't something be done to prevent the civil war Maybe if it, you know, it was like Andrew Jackson who was suggesting that if he'd been around, even though he was dead for 10 years, could have prevented the Civil War. I didn't hear that, no. <laughs> Seems to be had some fundamental, fundamental misgivings or misunderstandings about what the Civil War was about. People have that about a lot of things, though. This is true. I see a lot of people uh, you know, talking about the Second World War and how America had to go in there because the Jews were being executed in the Holocaust. And it's like, well, that may be true in hindsight <laughs> however we didn't know about that until right at the end of the war yep. that was a shocking discovery for everyone <laughs> that came way later in the piece mm. uh, and and similar with the civil war you know maybe that was an argument that had to be had we had a bunch of people that weren't going to change and a bunch of people that were like bitch you got to change <laughs> they don't seem to be two flexible points you know like no one's really going to negotiate yeah an awful lot it was like well, so I, I can't see anyone changing that. Maybe Donald Trump, master of the deal, yes, could have oh. changed that. I mean, look look at how he's been able to make the Mexicans pay for the. Oh, sorry, that hasn't happened, has it? It's it hasn't. That, that deal hasn't happened. Let's put a put a uh, rain check on that deal. Well, they're still talking about the deal, though. I saw uh, Spicy Spice, <laughs> Spicy Sean, the Spicy Hand Roll talking about uh, the different kinds of walls they could put up, and most of them were fences. Yes, and he got angry when journalists started pointing that out. Chain link is not a wall. Yes, he, he decided to school the press pool about the definition of a wall and how it may differ, but it's still a wall. Mm. But it's a fence. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. I enjoy him. You know, I, 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 as much as I, I loathe the Trump administration and, and I, uh, two things. One, I don't like what they stand for, but it is good that they're getting pushed back. So I, I'm sort of celebrating their losses where they're probably not. Um, but, you know, sort of what we want to have happen is happening. Judges are pushing back against them. Mm. People are, you know, protesting. It, it looks like it won't be so bad. 
He's not achieving as much as he thought he would, no. which is something. Hasn't even managed to repeal Obamacare. No, they just put something through, though, didn't they? It's going to get blocked in the Senate. Yeah. They did to get some sort of repeal through the House. Yeah. But it will get blocked in the Senate more than likely. Yeah. Um, speaking of spicy, do you think mm. there's this sort of mad genius in Trump appointing Sean Spicer? If you put a buffoon to defend your buffoonish policies, it's sort of like a firewall against you yourself. So it's actually the press criticises more Spicer than Trump for his buffoonery. Yeah, it's... I think... Have you ever watched... Because like, you'd think he would have been fired by now by his incompetence. Yet yeah. the, the White House stands behind it. And it's almost like a defence mechanism because he makes such a fool of himself that it doesn't go beyond him. That's the end of the criticism. I'm, I'm wondering critique. if that's his goal. I think that's their goal with him. He I, I watched his dissent and argument yeah. by existing. My favourite... One of my favourite HBO shows, Veep, has the... Um, the press secretary on that is a is a buffoon, and it's interesting to watch reality imitating art. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's intentional. I think they've definitely put someone there that the press are going to mock. They're going to have a field day with to draw attention away from other people. And, and the sort of the idiotcy of the policies defending gets attributed to Spicy, yeah, rather than the Trump, rather than Donald. Yeah, and I also think it's 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 kind of handy because while the press are having a field day, concentrating on. You know, this guy's a buffoon. We're having a hard time getting our questions answered. They're also not getting their questions answered. You know? No. Like, it's, he's very good at sort of just distracting. He's muddying the waters. Yeah. No one can really get a question in edgeways. And so the administration's not being held as accountable as they want. And, and Trump famously dislikes the mainstream media oh, anyway. Really? So he's given no. them Spicer to deal with, <laughs> which must be horribly painful for them. You know, like, they're like, oh, this is the only access we can get is via this spicy hand roll buffoon. Well, you know, I mean, with the media being neutered, pack of dogs who have been starving for you know the last you know 15 years you give them any sort of you know toxic bit of food as you know even if it doesn't have any nourishment in it they're going to go and you know ravage over it yeah yeah look it's interesting to watch i i don't think they're going to change him over i reckon it's intentional he's a sacrificial lamb that one day will be made to fall on his sword but yes. not yet yes there, there will be one there'll be one clownish episode that he'll go too far that they'll have to offer him up but they'll just replace him with another buffoon yep. and you know who we haven't heard from lately for quite some time Kellyanne Conway where's she gone the basement <laughs> yeah she's she's locked away why doesn't she anyone call Kellyanne Conway anymore I don't know I, I think she, I think she's on the out I think she's on the out well, she did have that little um, mess up by putting her feet on the couch in the, the, the other office. The, uh, who's the former head of Breitbart? Do you use? Uh, Bannon. He's, yeah. he's, he's also, he. also AWOL. I think he and Kelly are in the naughty corner. You know, I'd like to see Bannon get pushed right out because I'd love to see Bannon back in Breitbart attacking the Donald. I think that's why they don't want to push him right out because they know how dangerous he could be mm. and the amount of votes that would walk with him. Yes. So that's... They're having to surf, surf a, a fine line there. I can't imagine Bannon's going to be happy on the hour for no. very long. So they, it's sort of just delaying that. They're not going to want to bring him back in. Do you, do you think it was um, Trump um, advisors that pushed Bannon out? or So, for instance, Kushner manoeuvring Bannon out? Or do you think it was a direct Donald, actually, you're taking too much limelight for me. I don't report to you. Or you report to me. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe a bit of both. Um, or, or maybe even just sort of the Washington machine sort of rejecting him as well. You know, he he was very um, he was finding things that were counter to sort of business as usual, mm. and and I think that there was probably a lot of pressure pressure coming back from a lot of people saying, "Hey, this guy's got to go," and Donald maybe consented to that. Mm. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I would like to I would like to read someone's stories about this. You know, ten fifteen years in the future. Yes, I mean, it's, listening to the secret tapes of the circus that goes on mm. in the uh, the Trump administration would be exciting, I imagine. Yeah, I, I reckon that that could be that could be really good. I, I, one day, hopefully, there's a reenactment. It could be like a Veep type of show about yeah. the Donald administration. You I know, mean, he's he's all about ratings. He might do it himself. He might retire <laughs> after the presidency, and then spoof his own presidency. I just sort of see this scene where you know you've got the the head of the um, oh, what's the leader of the um, administration. The secretary? No, not secretary of state. Uh, the people, his administration will have a head person. Okay. Can't remember. Anyway, just thinking, don't mention the wall to Donald. Don't mention the wall. All right, yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't want to mention the wall. Don't mention the wall. Don't mention don't. the fence either. 
Not fences. Don't point out barricades. <laughs> if someone sends you like a color bond steel fencing Bollards. thing, you get rid of it. They're all out. It's got to go through all the mail. Get rid of any kind of fencing mail. It's all got to go. <laughs> uh, so I've got another funny story. Uh, Stephen Fry. Chief of staff. There it is. Chief That's the staff. word I was looking for. <laughs> You're on it. So uh, Stephen Fry is in a little bit of hot water at the moment. I did uh, see He's being charged with blasphemy. Mm. Let me guess. Hold on. You're saying blasphemy. So he must be in a, a really backward Middle Eastern country, Saudi Arabia, perhaps. I, I'm, I'm aware they have strong as well. blasphemy laws. Expecting. No, it's Ireland. Ireland? Yeah, and it's under a 2009 law. That, the same Irish people that made um, gay marriage legal? Mm. Wow. Yeah, apparently uh, there are some, someone there was a little upset when he called God an utter maniac, which I think is a little uh, harsh because uh, Fry is an atheist. So, you know, it's hard to insult someone you don't acknowledge existing. Yes. Uh, but allegedly, I was reading about this and uh, the 2009 law is a watered down version of the laws that used to be there because basically they want to make it not enforceable. So the Irish constitution forces them to have this anti-defamation clause, laws that have to be enforceable for people to commit acts of blasphemy, but they've gone out of their way because they, to change the constitution requires a referendum. Uh. If they can't change the constitution, what they can do is change the law that they enforce it under to make it so that no one's really going to get charged. But Fry is still potentially liable for 25,000 pounds. Oh, really? Pounds. I thought you, so obviously it wasn't unenforceable enough. Wow, you can still be charged with it, whether or not it'll ever go through a court. Right. Well, I, I, think, it... I think Stephen Fry would enjoy this. Well, we'll give him a platform, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a bit of a field day. If anyone enjoys pointing out and mocking ridiculous, outdated institutions, it's Stephen Fry. Speaking of ridiculous, outdated <laughs> institutions, my last story for the week. I'm giving you 10 on that segue, by the way. Yeah. Well, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia <laughs> have this week granted women the right to make or to access government services without the consent of their legal guardian, their husband or their father. So they can make their own decisions about education, potentially getting work and access healthcare without having to get approval from a man. How's that for a backdated institution finally being removed? Wow. Don't know if it'll stick around. No. It's a pretty big change for Saudi it's Arabia. It's a huge change considering, considering that women are con considered chattels mm. in uh, Saudi Arabia. They, um, it's a, you know, they can't drive cars. They can't go out in public without a chaperone. Mm. It is 2017, isn't it? We, it is. It is. So they're finally taking a sort of a very begrudging step into the modern age. Maybe. I mean, maybe the next king will change it back. But how do you access those government services if you're not allowed to leave the house without a guardian or drive a car without a guardian? We're well, not this is to drive a car. This so. is probably the catch twenty two. <laughs> you see, you're allowed to access them, but you're probably gonna have to live next door and walk. Oh, so you want freedom? <laughs> you can have freedom. Yeah. You can access all the government services yes. you want. <laughs> can I just drive down the road? No, no. Whoa, whoa! I didn't say you could drive. <laughs> I said you can access the services. <laughs> You just got to get, find some way there. How are you going to get there? Where are you going to find a man that's going to allow you to access services without consent? Yeah. I guess you're right. They, if they're not willing to leave the house with you or drive you there, that's still a gateway on the consent. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> Maybe they're not quite as forward thinking as I thought they were when I read that article. <laughs> well, unless they can lodge applications online. But there's probably some other caveat that triggers a male approval along the way since there, there's so many intertwined consents required by males along the line yeah well it's disappointing saudi arabia you gotta, they gotta get get uh, even more into the future it's just it's gonna be such a long time before they change again you know like it's not gonna be like a, a i feel like change is a gradual thing with them and it's gonna take a long time to get to sort of the levels we were at in the 1900s mm. it always does my i mean i've had the luxury of growing up in a, a, a western country and a man definitely I, I acknowledge my male privilege um but you know growing up in a you know western society where um, women aren't treated the same way as in saudi arabia and so to try and get my head around that sort of imprisonment that women endure i'm going to say endure some people might say that um enjoy women enjoy that sort of restriction i'm going to assume they don't hmm. even if they don't know that there's a different world out there i'm going to assume it must suck because on the one hand you see um 
the, the opposite gender enjoying multiple freedoms that you can enjoy. Mm. And I mean, especially must... accessing healthcare without consent of someone, that, that's terrifying. I mean, imagine that you're, you know, of average intelligence or above and, you're, and your life is being controlled potentially by an ineptitude idiot. Yes, because you didn't have any choice in who you no, got married off to. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that would be you know the this icing on the cake of the terms of being slapped in the face. Yep. No, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. I don't even know how you get out of that situation, but you'd want to. And from it, I I, pro, uh, I thank the day that I was born a male in the West. Because <laughs> life is yeah, in the West, as you know, you're... so many issues I don't have to deal with because of that. Yeah. <sighs> tough times. Tough mm. times. I thought that was a happy story to end my little my little bracket of stories on. I rained on your parade. You've rained. Uh, I don't think you can really. It's like know, the rains in a desert, Frank. Go look at searching for Saudi Arabia for happy stories. I think that's just a. a yeah, but this was like the first. This was like the first potentially happy story in a long time coming out of there. But uh, I, I don't. I don't think that change in Saudi Arabia, a fundamental change for women, is going to come from chipping away. <laughs> they need, you know. Uh, huge, huge like fem- fundamental like a change. Feminist jihad. I, I can't even g- wrap my mind around the what to describe what sort of change would need to happen there. Yeah, I can't see it changing happening there in any time soon. I mean, the one thing's also sort of positive is they're trying to get away from the petrodollar. They're trying to embrace renewables. They know, they in know Saudi that, Arabia, allegedly, yeah. there's some building some of the largest solar plants in the world. They know that it's not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to change or. You know, they'll be back in the Stone Age. The women probably won't notice the difference, but uh, <laughs> the male princes might might be feeling a bit uh, a bit hard done by. Well, it's funny. I mean, well, I can't speak for the for the Saudi royal family, but I, I'm led to believe they're more forward thinking than um, the fundamentalists that control how they govern the country. Mm, okay. Is it another one of those things like in Iran where there's like a theocratic thing in charge of making laws i don't know enough about the kingdom of saudi arabia uh well yeah i'd be speaking out of turn to say i am an expert on it but obviously the king is the two of us in this room who's the bigger expert is but the 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 saudi royal family governed by the grace of the islamic theocracy there yeah okay well, separation it, of church and state is important, Frank. We should just send Corey in to explain <laughs> it to them. Very hasty, even. Yes, indeed. He's I mean, got well, military training as well, so if things go, things go west, he can handle that too. <laughs> we like die hard. Um, that's all I've got. I'm out. That's a wrap. We made it to the 52-minute mark. It's not too bad the, without uh, Jason. The lack of preparation. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I've been Franco. I've been Dean.